Look what we have here. Beautiful homemade pretzels in a variety of shapes. And they came out of the oven about five minutes ago, so I'm gonna give a taste. I'm gonna go with this uh, long guy here. I have some Dijon mustard to dip it in. That's my favorite thing with pretzels, so let's see what this is like. Mmm. 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 Really good. Chewy. Mmm. That's a nice little pretzel. Got the salt on it. Mmm. Well, that's a delicious little snack. Hope you try it at home. Here's how to do it. The ingredients to make these pretzels are very, very simple, and there's not many of them. Here they are. So, first thing you're going to need, you're going to need some yeast. Okay, to make the pretzels rise, this is active dry yeast, a packet. We're not going to use the whole packet, but this is generally how they come. You're also going to need some warm water. You're also going to need some sugar. This is sugar in this bag. You're also going to need some flour, just basic all-purpose flour, and some basic salt. That's it, and now let's put it all together. Okay, so to get the very accurate measurement of flour, because the measurement of flour is everything in um, baking, we're going to use a scale for this. We're going to use a scale, and this is what the kitchen scale looks like. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, and if you can see, it says zero ounces, but I don't want ounces. See that? I want grams. So we're going to change the unit. There, it says zero G. If you can see that little G, that's grams. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put my little bowl onto the scale. Now it says 330 grams for the bowl. But if you hit this, C-T-A-R-E, tear, it's gonna zero out again, okay? So now I'm gonna put in my flour and what I want is 240 grams of flour. So. I'm not using any measuring equipment, not cups or anything. This is how I'm measuring by weight. So let's see how much flour that takes. 240 grams. I'm just going to keep loading in flour until it gets to 240. Okay. Okay, starting a little close. 223. Oh, we're getting real close. So let's see. Almost there. There's serious. Okay. 240 grams of flour. So that's exactly how much we need. And I'll do the other ingredients next. Go. Okay, so we just measured the flour right here in this bowl. In this little cup, I have my one teaspoon of sugar and my half teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to toss that in there and give it a mix. Okay, so now I have a bigger bowl, and in the bigger bowl, I'm gonna put my yeast. In it goes. And then I'm gonna put the water. Now this is 3 fourths cup of water in here. And this right here, this is a thermometer. What I did was I heated up the water in the microwave to warm it up to, what does it say here? This is about 100, yeah, it varies. A little over 100, 110 right now. So that's what you want. It just helps to activate the yeast. So I'm gonna add this to this. Okay, just use the same spoon I had, gonna mix it up. All you wanna do is dissolve the yeast. It's gonna kinda of look like dirty water at first, but that's okay, that's just what it looks like. All right, so. Once I've dissolved the yeast, I'll add the flour, some of the flour, and you'll see what happens next. Okay, so I've got the bigger bowl that has the yeast in the warm water, and I have the smaller bowl that has the flour, the sugar, and the salt. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add most of the flour mixture to the yeast water mixture. So I'm gonna go with like maybe a little more than half of it there, and I'm gonna stir it in, okay? And it's just kind of look gonna look kind of oatmeal-y at first. So 
I'm definitely going to need more flour. Ultimately, I'm going to use all of it, but so I'm going to add more. Still got a little left behind, so let's add this in. <clears throat> but this is a really simple dough, simple dough to make. Okay, so now it's really starting to clump together. That's looking more like it should, just like that. Okay, you can see it's definitely getting um, more clumpy, and that's what we want. Still sticky though, so I'm going to add a little more of this. Okay, let's add that in. You might even want to <clears throat> go with your hand a little bit to mix it up if it's not terribly sticky. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to keep stirring this in. Notice I still have some flour left in here, some flour mixture left in here. All right, I'm going to come back in just a second. Okay, so we have our dough here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this remaining flour here. I'm going to sprinkle it on my surface and on my hands, my very clean hands, and I'm going to put the dough here. Okay, now what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to gather this dough together and knead the dough. That's K-N-E-A-D, <laughs> the dough. Okay, now mostly I use the palms of my hands, not my fingertips, but the palms of my hands. I'm going like this, okay, like this. Push on that dough. This is called kneading the dough. And if it starts to oh, stick to your palms, I still have a little more flour in here that I can use. <clears throat> but students sometimes they think oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna knead the dough too hard. Nope, you can't really, that's not possible to knead the dough too hard. I'm using my palms, a little bit more flour. If it starts to stick to your hands, you need a little bit more of the flour that's left in your bowl. But you should not need more than what's in your bowl. Because right now, the dough feels very rough to me. But I'm going to knead this dough for a good five minutes. Five full minutes so that it's nice and soft and pliable and beautiful. So again, ugh, push down hard on that dough, like this. Push, smash the palm of your hand in there. This should tire you out a bit doing this. Okay, I'm gonna come back after about five minutes of kneading this dough. Okay, I have kneaded this dough for five minutes. It is much softer and smoother than it was before. Here it is, just like this. And look, I didn't even need to use all of my flour stuff. And look at my hands. That's just dry flour. There you go, look at my hands. No big sticky mess, nothing stuck to my hands. Okay, so I have a bag. I've labeled it just like you will label it with the period and the lab number. We're gonna get some cooking spray and spray inside the bag. This is so that the dough won't stick. Put the dough into the bag. Zip up the bag. And do make sure to get the air out. That did not work, let's try it again. Well, I'll work on this thing. Get the air out so that the bag is sealed. And then it will go into the refrigerator overnight. Overnight, that'll give the dough time to rise. And by the way, the purpose of our kneading the dough was to activate and create gluten, which is what you want for things like pretzels and pizza doughs and things like that. So this guy's gonna go into the fridge and then we will be overnight and then we'll be ready to do day two to bake and shape and bake the pretzels. Okay, so magically 24 hours has passed. It is now the next day. I want you to take a look at something. This is the dough 
This is the dough that I just made, that you just saw me made, and this is a dough that I made the day before. So this is freshly made, and this is 24 hours later. You can see a big difference. This dough is much puffier. It still weighs the same, but the yeast have gotten all, the yeast have eaten up all the sugars and stuff in there and made the dough nice and full of carbon dioxide. So this is ready to be made into pretzels. There you go. And we'll come back and I'll show you how to make them into pretzels. Okay, so I've taken the dough out of the bag and I put it on my cutting board. Now, this neat tool is called a bench scraper. And um, we don't have them at school, but at school you can just use a butter knife. But I have this at home, so I'm gonna use it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into 10 to 12 pieces, 10 to 12 pieces. So maybe I'll go 12, which means one cut there. Cut there. They should be about the same size. Okay, so if I go, let's see, that's four, so I'm going to go about three here. So we'll end up with pieces that look about that size. I'm cutting this into 12s. We'll come back when I have 12 pieces. Okay, one thing that I did was I, I'm preheating my oven to 450. You want to do that soon because it takes a while to get to 450. Okay, so I've taken one of my pieces of dough and I'm gonna work on my board here. You can work on a cutting board, but it might be easier at school to work just right on the green countertop. I'm not using any flour to roll this. Flour actually gets in the way. I want it to be slightly, slightly tacky, ever so slightly sticky. Now watch how I do this. I'm going to use my two palms and I'm gonna make this guy a big long snake like this. You want to get it pretty long here. It should be easy to work with. It shouldn't fight you on getting all stretched out like that. Okay, so we've got that. Now, let's watch how I do it. Okay, go down here. I'm going to twist it. Come back over there. Pretzel shape. Just like that. So if you want a classic pretzel shape, that's how you do it. And, okay, I'm gonna put this over here with my other guy. Okay, let me do another one for you. So again, you're gonna take this, roll it out, roll it out, roll it out. Okay, get it at least 12 inches long, at least a foot long, because you, you always seem to need it longer than you think. Okay, so I have that. Let's see if I can do it towards you. So I'm going to take the ends and I'm going to twist them once, just like that. And then put it down like that. So I have a pretzel shape again, just like that. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna do more of these and maybe some other shapes as well because there's no law that says it has to be a pretzel shape and I'll show you what that looks like when we come back. Okay, as you can see, I've got a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and on it I have my shapes. Some are more traditional pretzel shapes, some we just kind of riffed on our own shapes. And what I've got here is a beaten egg, some beaten egg and this is a pastry brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush each of these so that it has a nice little, that's called an egg wash, coating of some egg on there. That'll give it some nice color and a nice little flavor there too. So I'm gonna egg wash them and then I'm just gonna do two of them. So before they get dried off, this is kosher salt, it's the same container in your, in your lab at school. And I'm gonna sprinkle some kosher salt on each of them, just like that. Because pretzels without some salt don't really taste like much, they taste very bland. So you do wanna have some salt on them so they taste like something. So what I'm gonna to continue to do is, I'm gonna to continue to Give them the egg wash. I'm just gonna egg wash a couple of them at a time and then salt them 
and then egg wash a couple more and then salt those so that because the egg wash will kind of dry off and then the salt won't stick to it so i'm going to come back when all of these guys are done and i'm ready to put them into the oven Okay, as you can see, I have egg washed and salted all of them. There's a whole bunch of egg left over. You don't need even close to a full egg. We'll be doing the sharing in class. All right, so I'm gonna put these into the oven now. I think it's 10 to 12 minutes. We'll check them after 10 minutes and see if they look a nice golden brown. You definitely want some brown on this. Otherwise, they're just kind of doughy. So when we come back, we'll see what that looks like. All righty, they just came out of the oven. Notice the color. They have some nice golden brown on them and they look great. And I certainly hope you try this at home because they're really neat and easy to make.